Now as we enter the room, on the left side is an ephemeral wall drawing which spans about three meters by seven meters. You have a denuded man holding the globe which is half broken and you have the pieces strewn on the other side. The people you see, the two large faces with staring eyes and the little girl, they all come from a world which is extremely deprived. It is the world of the dispossessed. It's a kind of an ominous statement to see how we will move out of the morass that we are in at the moment. It's a grey morass. Nalini Malani is een hele beroemde kunstenaar uit uh, India. Het bijzondere aan het werk van Malani is dat het uit heel veel verschillende media bestaat. En dat kun je ook zien op deze tentoonstelling. Ze maakt kunstersboeken, muurtekeningen, uh, ze performances, er is videokunst. Ik ben eigenlijk een painter. En ik denk in drawing. Ik you know. kan niet in in woorden zo veel, maar ik maak make storyboards, ik maak you know, dingen zoals like dat. Which... A visual thing rather than a written thing. Uh, I'm sort of dyslexic when it comes to writing. Het werk van Malani is vol aan verhalen over geweld tegen vrouwen, maar ook allerlei literaire verhalen, uh, klassieke mythologie, Indiaanse mythologie, um, gecombineerd weer met Shakespeare of met, uh, met Brecht. Het kan allemaal. Het is één universum, een heel politiek geëngageerd activistisch universum. Well, often I find that the subject I pick up is vaster than just one artwork. For example, if I have been working with Cassandra, the myth of Cassandra, I started with the painted book. From the painted book, it became a video installation, and then it went into paintings. It's, it's a vast subject, because the myth of Cassandra can give you so many ideas. So I do use different materials uh, that can uh, help the language to flow. In begin van deze eeuw bedacht ze dat ze alles samen wilde brengen in uh, iets dat zij video schaduwspelen noemt, video shadow plays. En uh, daarin zien we dus roterende cilinders die beschilderd zijn. We zien er videoprojecties op. Je hoort er geluid bij en je wordt er als bezoeker helemaal door omgeven. In this work, the job, I for the first time made cylinders. The theater which we were going to work in had very high ceilings. And from the flies, I had the cylinders coming down. And the costumes would change and the scenario would change only through the cylinders. And I made five such, but as these cylinders came down, they twirled and formed shadows because I'd painted on them. And we couldn't travel with this play and it was very difficult to pay the actors and it was altogether difficult to perform in India. I decided to make video shadow plays. And then you have the first one in the Stale Lake, Transgressions. It's great that the Stale Lake Museum bought this first shadow play because it is an incredible work. It is full of references to ecological disaster, to globalization, to the problem of having uh, different traditions being destroyed by one another. Yeah. You see six Indian languages going down in the shadows, and that is a reference to the loss of local languages, because English becomes the only language that we speak. The first layer, let's say, that you encounter in the shadow play is very attractive. People come and say, beautiful. But there's more happening inside. The text gives you another layer. The images begin to speak another language, which the first language, it sort of null nullifies that beauty. Because in some cases, like in game pieces, you have bombs falling over the city. And in this case, it's the tattoo over a man's, a white man's arm, which has to do with the post-colonial situation that we were in, in the, in the early part of the 21st century. Deze tentoonstelling zou je kunnen zien als een, een klein retrospectief. We hebben samen met de kunstenaar gewerkt en we hebben dus het werk wat we zelf in de collectie hebben en hebben aangekocht in 2001 van een context voorzien. We laten zien hoe zij tot die videoschaduwspelen is gekomen. I have learned so much from 
just looking at her work and immersing myself in it. I think what the audience will experience is that art can be something that is beautiful, powerful, strong and subtle at the same time. They will not surrender to it, but step into it and then respond to it. And that dialogic nature of the work, I think, is really important and, and very, uh, uh, it's a beautiful experience. In, go, go.